before we get started in today's video, I want to talk about something really important. This little girl, her name is Olivia. They call her Olivia. She is 11 years old. And this past Saturday, she was diagnosed with leukemia. Olivia is from our hometown. Uh, she happens to be very, very sick at the moment. She started getting sick in January, so showing symptoms, and she was just Saturday uh, diagnosed with leukemia. I know she had a report placed Tuesday and started chemo on Tuesday. She has her next round of chemo today, the day that you're watching it. And Livy's mom, her name is Casey. Casey is a single mother to two children, and she is very overwhelmed at the moment, as any parent would be. She is also going to be out of work for a while because they said her treatments could take up to three years. She is supposed to have chemo three times a week for three years. If you would like to help Olivia and her mother and her sister, there's an address down below to where you can donate to help Livy fight leukemia. Believe me, it is very hard being in a hospital setting with, with no income coming in. She's just diagnosed, so there's a lot of things that she's going to have to pursue that right now she's just so overwhelmed that she doesn't know even where to start. So anything helps. If you're unable to donate monetarily, there's other ways that you can help Livy and her mom. Just by watching this video, it is going to help Livy and her mom with the leukemia treatments. Because every bit of revenue that I make from this video is going to go to Livy and her mom and Casey. So, this is how you can help get this video to make good revenue so we can give it to Livy and her mama. Watch this video in its entirety. Like this video. Comment anything you want to comment. And share this video so it will increase the video's reach. Therefore, increases the revenue. You can help Libby and her mama just by watching this video. I will share this link on my channel as well. Libby's mom, Casey, is really good friends with my Aunt Kim and her sister, Kim. And Kim said that there is an address that she will get to me where you can mail donations to Casey and Libby and they will deposit it straight into her bank account. So, if you would like to do that, you can mail it to the address that I put in the description box below. The mother's name is Casey Williams. All right. Welcome to the first episode of Country is Cornbread. <laughs>
right, guys, let's get started with episode one of Country is Cornbread. How much more country can you be than to eat a cow tail? Yeah, we found new cow tails today. They are strawberry smoothie cow tails. Yes, please. I think they're good. I like them. They taste like a cow tail with just a hint of strawberry. Yeah. They're a little bit different. They're... I usually don't like strawberry flavor stuff like the fake kind, but this isn't too bad. It kind of tastes like a real strawberry. You ever heard of slinging a cow by its tail? How can you do that? They're so heavy. <laughs> I think it's a metaphor. What does it mean? I don't know. Country is cornbread. You're probably like, Brooke, what is this new series? Well, it's in the title. We're just going to talk to you about growing up country as cornbread. And we're going to show you a country snack each episode. This is going to be fun. Let's do it! And you don't get much more country than where we grew up. <laughs> we grew up in a small town called Sneedville, Tennessee. <coughs> in Hancock County. You seen clips in my intro? And that was Sneedville. I went there last weekend just to get clips to show you guys. And if you've seen the one hanging red light. That's that was, two. There's two. But you notice nobody was even at the red light. A four-way stop sign would work just as well. It would. <laughs> but they had to have the red light. They had to feel big. You know, I remember when they was that wall. Do you remember the wall around the courthouse? Yes. And all the old men that would sit there and whittle, 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 and gossip. That's true. They gossip more than women. Dad used to drop us off in town on Saturday, and he would go. He'd go to the courthouse and hang out at the courthouse while we roamed town. But you could. How, how long did it take you to roam, well from one end of town to the next? Five seconds. <laughs> it wasn't even a mile long. I don't think. I don't think so, because once you get past. Family dollar they like now so What's the loop? Would the loop have made a mile? If you went up by the car wash and then went up in front of the First Baptist and went down by the uh, laundromat and come back by Pal Valley and down that way to Green Supermarket, would that have been a mile? I don't even know if that'd be a mile. I really don't. Because you can walk that awful fast. Oh, we used to walk it every Saturday. And I don't know about you, but I don't walk a mile fast. And I used to could, but not anymore. Not I don't anymore. walk anywhere fast now. I'm a leisure walker. <laughs> yeah. You want to try one of these? What is that? It is a I like those. row. I like oh, watermelon. I like those. You've had these before? Mm -hmm. Well, in a bag of different kinds. I've never had the watermelon. I've seen it today. Tootsie Row. This is new to me. I love Tootsie Row. But it's a watermelon flavored Tootsie. Like, come on. I went ham at Dollar Tree today. It's nice. I love watermelon. It's so good. It looks like this. And it was in the Easter candy section. I don't know why. It's not Easter. You know what? You know what's odd? You know how <clears throat> you think of something and then it leads to another thought and it leads to another thought and it leads to another thought? Yes. Yeah. When you said, you were talking about these and it made me, you said Tootsie Rolls. Well, that made me think of when I was young and we went uh, trick or treating when I was little. We always got Tootsie Rolls and apples. And I was just thinking, you know what our costume was? Sheets with holes. Mm -mm. Oh! Those well, plastic masks, and that was it. That's terrifying, though. Have you seen those? Like the vintage With a hole right here, and the, they never did line up. <gasps> that's like what Michael Myers did in the original. Yeah. Those, those are scary. And a bag, and, a, pa and a, a poke. I bet people don't know what a poke is. Okay, listen to me. I didn't know what a poke was. And I grew up there, and Vicky the other day, she was like, you gotta get you a poke. And I was like, what the heck is a poke? Apparently, it's a bag. It's, like, a, it's a paper bag. Like the little ones? No. A the grocery bag. bag. Oh. Do you know what pasteboard is? A lot of people don't know what I'm talking about when I say pasteboard. It's cardboard. My mom calls it pasteboard. That's what I call it. I call it cardboard. I caught a pasteboard once to Dusty without thinking about it. And he said, what the heck are you saying, pasteboard? Dusty didn't grow up in the small town that we did. He grew up in the big city life. I bet people, really, but... Did we talk the other day about uh, lash pins? Safety pins. P 
People looked at me like I had three heads because I said, do you all have a latch pin? Oh, you guys probably refer to it as a safety pin. <laughs> I didn't really know that people didn't call it latch pins. A latch. I know. Are the big ones latch pins that go in baby diapers that they had back in the diapers. day? Those are diaper pins. <clears throat> well, they poke the baby. And then there was the hat pins. Remember the hat pins? Skirts. Oh, skirts had pins too. Remember the skirt pins? I remember skirts had... Mama sometimes if she... If I went over and I forgot my dress or something, she would give me one of her skirts to wear for church. And she would get those... What are they called? Stick pins? And she would tighten it up and... Stick pins, and I'd be getting poked. <laughs> she thought it'd keep you good in church. <laughs> I had to stay still, because I get poked by them stick pins. The one with the colorful heads on the top. Yes. The balls. Oh, my. That Are you hurt. talking about the boot nail pins? Were they that big? Yeah. They were the dress long pins. ones. They're dress pins. Well, they hurt. Yeah. And Mama would always use those. <laughs> Why can't you use a safety pin? I don't have any. <laughs> And when we got baptized? I got baptized in a baptistry. I'm city-fied. I got baptized in the Clinch River. And you always, Mom always had to pin our, our dresses at the bottom. So when we got dumped, our dresses wouldn't fly up. Yeah. Oh, fun facts. When I was young and I would go to church with Mama and Papa, and I wore a tank top, Mama would fuss at me. She was like, you can't wear a tank top to the church house, Brooke. Well, we weren't allowed to wear shorts. Heavens to Betsy if I wore a spaghetti strap. Like a sundress. Mm-mm. Mama didn't like it. When you were raised as the as a child of a Baptist preacher in the South, where I grew up, you didn't wear shorts. We weren't allowed to wear shorts till we were I wore shorts. But, you know, my mom bought me shorts. One thing Mama wouldn't let us do was play playing cards. Or dice. Yeah, she said it was gambling. I was like, Mamo, we're just going to play solitaire. She's like, nope. Not even old gambling. maid. Not even old maid. No. I remember one time I brought Uno, and oh my gosh. Mamo's like, not here. You can play that at home, but you ain't playing that here. It's Uno. I think that girl went back to Papa Fate. But now Mamo don't care if we do. She got a little bit looser in the age. Well, we or she just gave up after having so many grandkids and great grandkids. We would always <laughs> bring them anyways. Yeah. Oh, you know what was fun? This was fun. This was so fun. Okay, Mamma and Vicky was my babysitters. Okay, and I remember being babysitter. It was like spring. It's when the flowers were blooming, and this is probably my favorite memory of all time. Going to my mom's house. Okay. Okay. So, okay, where did we live? Oh, where she lives. Oh, I'm, only, I'm only oh, seeing where she lives now. You didn't, you weren't born when we lived down in the old house. No, no. Um, so, Mamma would get, you remember the crystal wedding oatmeal? And it came with the little tiny cups, different color cups that were clear. She would get one of those and she would get a two liter Pepsi bottle. And then she would get saltine crackers and peanut butter and make peanut butter crackers, and put them in a little sandwich bag that flipped yeah. over. Yes. And Mama would take me walking up the road, and we'd walk up into the woods, and we'd sit down, and we would eat our peanut butter crackers, and we she would pour me some Pepsi in the oatmeal cup, and I'd drink it. Then we'd keep walking, and we'd go to that spring up there, mm -hmm. and she would rinse out my oatmeal cup and give me some hot, hot, <laughs> cold spring water to drink. Then we'd go good. pick wildflowers. And yeah. it was the best time. That was, that's probably my favorite memory. And Pepsi, Pepsi isn't good unless you drink it at Mamma's. Well, house. Pepsi's not as good as it was back then anyway. It was so good it with was, peanut butter it was, crackers. It was really good back, back then. She used to be addicted to Pepsi. Uh, my son was born addicted to Pepsi. Well, he wasn't addicted to Pepsi, but he had a, a acquired a taste for Pepsi. Well, I didn't give it to him. <laughs> She gave her newborn baby. I don't know Pepsi if he was that in a way, bottle. Because when he was about two, that's when he wanted his Pepsi. <laughs> and he would steal my tomatoes and eat my tomatoes. It's time for the Appalachian word of the day. Are you ready? Let's do it. Vicky, what's your Appalachian word of the day? You get a penny go. Loafing. A loafer. And it's not a shoe. Penny loafers. You remember them shoes? But a loafer apparently is people who loaf around. I explained it with the word. I'm sorry. <laughs> loaf, 
Loafing or a loafer? A loafer is someone who does the loafing. Loafing is someone who goes somewhere and just hangs out and shoots the bull. They people watch and they gossip. Well, they talk. Like, like I saw about my dad going to the courthouse on Saturday, he went to loaf. Or they'd go to part stores or they'd go somewhere and then they just stand They loaf around. around at the Hardee's at breakfast. Yes, that's what, that's what they do. So that's my Appalachian word of the day. Do y'all ever have those old people that go to the Hardee's or Carl's Jr.? <laughs> is that what it is? They go and they play, they play music in the Hardee's. And they would have a like a an old men older men's club that they would sit around and talk and shoot the breeze. You know what? That's so fun. Why don't we have a women's club? Women ain't got time for that. <laughs> that is a little bit true, unfortunately. But I still want to do it. I'm trying to get Vicky to go play bingo with me Saturday. I hate bingo. I don't want to play bingo. I did it since I was like, Caitlin go. She won't go play bingo with me. I know she's trying to be an old woman now. It's true. Caitlin really wants to be an old lady lately. It's so, what's awesome. your Appalachian Southern word of the day? I'll probably pick that one we're talking about. Which Swanee. one? Swanee. Why Swanee? And it's not a river. Oh, Swanee, I can't believe you. I swear. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. It's Vicky. Oh, Swanee, oh, where's Vicky? Swanee. Or another good one. We'll do a bonus. We'll do a bonus Appalachian word. Spinning a knot. One word. Spinning the knot. Spinning the knot. Yep. It's not spinning. Spinning the knot. Spinning the knot. I want to go. I'm spinning the knot with Mamma. Or your cousin. Um. Riley's coming over and she's going to spin a knot. It's spinning the knot and spinning the knot. And that's it. Yeah, just two, just two. Spinning a knife. And another saying: If someone says "bless your heart," they don't mean that's it. not a compliment. It could be. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Or most of the time, it's okay. Lord have mercy on people. If you hear a compliment followed by "bless their heart" or "bless your heart," it means they're stupid. It's not a compliment. It's. <laughs> It's mostly, did you see what she did to her front porch? Bless her heart. Mm. Or bless her heart, did you see what she did to her yard? She thought she did such a good thing, and it just looks awful. Bless her heart. Bless her heart, she don't know to come in out of the rain. Does that mean she's stupid? Yeah. I thought so. See, I know. Unagi. I have a Unagi. Salmon skin roll. Is that what it is? Ooh, salmon skin roll. <laughs> it's our clip. Unagi. <laughs> ah, salmon skin roll. Look <laughs> at the clip of it. We're we like friends and golden girls. That's too much, Brie. That is one slice. Wait, do you have, do you break yours apart? Yes. Okay, so we're going to show you the ultimate southern snack, all right? You're going to take one piece of loaf bread. One piece. Are we the only people that call it loaf bread? It's loaf bread. Everybody calls it that, right? No. A lot of people call it white bread. Oh, loaf bread. <laughs> what slice? Because it's a loaf. And you're going to break it up into Or pieces. sliced bread. I've heard them called sliced bread, too. I've heard sliced bread. Just break this it up. Is, Hey, the difference is, is when we were young, we didn't have store-bought syrup. Me and Mom made it with the brown sugar. Mom tried to make it one time, and it's plum hot. Wait a minute, I'm doing mine backwards. I always made my syrup and peanut butter first. Well, I don't know why you did Because it stirs up better. Okay, see this? You're going to cut it up in tiny pieces. Vicky apparently does it backwards. I like to mix mine up. I like to drizzle do mine over and then stir it. What? Yeah. Okay, see this? And you're gonna, this is what I do. Syrup. There you go, Vicky. Okay. And this is what I do. I'm gonna lay my bread right here. Put mine in the bowl. 
which granted i could see how it would mix better it's just this is the way i feel what is right i take a dollop of the peanut butter like this then i'm going to stir it up like a madman i think i need a little bit more syrup Isn't it amazing how smells can just bring nostalgia right yeah. back? This smells like Mamaw's kitchen in the middle of the night when everybody was staying all night and everybody's up talking and everybody just has a big bowl of loaf bread, syrup, and peanut butter. Sorry. But, that looks like. Oh, it's so good. All it is is it makes you thirsty. It's very rich. I'm not a big milk drinker. I'm kind of lactose intolerant. I don't drink milk. <laughs> I could drink milk with this. See, this is what mine looks like. She probably crumbles up cornbread and her two beans too. I, I do. Ugh. <laughs> what do you do? I put my cornbread in my soup beans and I break it off. Cause I don't like it, so I don't like my cornbread soggy. I have to have it soggy, and to make it like a mush, like a play-doh. It's so good. You probably eat two-day-old soup beans too, don't you? Oh, well, that's not long. <laughs> I don't like a day. I don't like soup beans the second day because I think they're too thick. I just make a pound usually, and that's enough. This is rich. It's so rich. I need water. Hold on. Yeah, I need water. Oh God, I don't drink water. <clears throat> Vicky's blood is pure Dr. Pepper. Did you see that shirt? I had a shirt on the other day that said, keep me a Dr. Pepper and I'll love you forever. <laughs> don't get you that. Here, my finger don't work. <laughs> so the doctor wants to cut Vicky's finger off. I bet she should. But the reason I think she should isn't because it's in her way. <laughs> it's rich. In way. It hurts. Your finger? Yes, it hurts. The reason I say cut it off so you have a fun story to tell. Look at me, kids. I ain't got a finger. It's, a, it's more fun to show somebody and freak out. What would happen if I grabbed it? It hurt. <coughs> it hurts right here. Where the fan. Where did you do this? Up and down. Up and down. I can't shamey, shamey people. Do you all know what shamey, shamey is? Is that a southern thing? Shamey, uh -huh. shamey, shamey, shamey. You know we used to do that in school? And I think that's mean. Will the teacher make you do it? To yeah, they, if a kid did something, they'd have to go to the front of the class and kids would go, shamey, shamey, shamey. I thought, that's mean. That is mean. I but they were different back then. Oh, yeah. They would paddle kids. Mm -hmm. I remember a teacher, there was one teacher in school that would paddle. And it was, you know, the Q&A, we talked about the tiny school that we went to that was just four rooms and there was two we grades need to put a picture room. of that in there. I know. I'll insert it here. Okay. So there was one, <laughs> and you're probably also wondering who was a principal of this school. The sixth and seventh grade teacher, Mr. Smith. Not brown time. He was the paddler. Mm. And he would drill holes in a paddle so it would hurt worse. And he loved to paddle. He would paddle everybody if he could. Sounds like the principal was there when I went there. Who was your principal? Mr. Wolf. I don't think I ever even seen him. He was went then he went to the high school. He liked to paddle. He would paddle you for your birthday. He did me once. That's the only paddle I never got. He you got a paddle for my birthday, <gasps> and I cried because it hurt so bad. Did it really pay you for your birthday? Yes. Like, I didn't have a choice. That, that wouldn't fly nowadays. Mm-mm. I ain't never got a pad one done. Most I ever got in school was a detention, but it was for chewing gum. You remember, uh, remember me telling you when I got my nose broke in school? Yes. I remember Tim, I think was a junior or senior in high school and he got off the bus and I couldn't wait to go down there and show him my big black eye and my nose was just, you know, three times my face. 
And Were I'm you like, excited? Well, kind of. I thought, because he didn't, they didn't even call mom and told him, tell him what happened. They didn't even inform mom. Didn't know it till I walked in the sc after school and showed her Man, my Man, what a different time. But I walked in there, I was down there and was going to show Tim. And he got off the bus and looked at me and laughed. And my heart broke. And you were so excited. Yeah, I was like, look what happened. <laughs> At Mr. Wolf was principal then. He walks up to me. I got hit in the nose with a baseball. But I did catch the guy out. Nobody ever caught him out. For, but it's because it fell off my face into my hands. <laughs> <laughs> but he walked up. They told him about it. He walks up and he grabs a hold of my nose and goes like this. And says, oh, it's broke. Did you scream? Yes, I screamed. I saw, well, after I quit seeing stars. Stable, Tennessee, going to Seals Mathis School. I tell y'all, you probably wouldn't believe some of the stuff. You toughened you up. So, when we had recess, we all, every grade got to go out for recess at the same time. And we all play together. because Really? Yeah, there wasn't. We didn't. I'm trying to. Well, no, each, each classroom went out at a different time. Oh, we all went out together. We went out at different times. And when it was time to go back in. For school, there wasn't no bell that rung. <laughs> Teachers would stand on the top of the steps and yell, Books! Books. Yep. And when we moved out of Sneevil, I was in like third grade. And we, I, was, I started a new school. And it was kind of like a bigger town. So they did not have small little Sills Mathis Elementary in the big town. And I remember... The first day we went out for recess, and they started just blowing whistles, and bells were ringing. And I was like, "What does that mean?" Nobody yelled books. You know how many? I didn't know what had happened. You know how many people was in my eighth grade class at Sil Mathis? You know how many? Seventeen. People? Seven. Five. I was. Sit I could probably, uh, honest to God, my class probably had ten. 12 max. Our classroom only had like I can still name them. 17, 18 people in it. I still, well, pretty much almost everybody that was in my class was my family. <laughs> so I can still name them. But. Our family of them. a family. Yeah. So there was me. Dusty. Not my Dusty. Um, Your cousin Dusty. Yes, cousin Dusty. Cousin Mindy. Jessica. Olivia. Corey. Kelly, the boy, Grandma Haley, Emily, not my sister Emily, another Emily. That might be it. Tim, oh Timmy, there was a boy named Timmy, but I, he was in and out. I think I, oh Aaron, Aaron. And at my eighth grade class, it was me, Tammy, Rita, Regina. And Farron. That's it? That's all your family? Yeah. No, Tammy's not related to me. Is she not? Mm-mm. She's just, she's my best friend. Oh, Chris! Eleven. I've got some, I've got a story to tell. When I was growing up, we lived in a house that was over a hundred years old. When I, when we moved there. And one day, we it was in April, and it came a flood, and we had to come home from school. So, you know how you come up by Eugene's and you come on up by his house and go across the bridge? Mm hmm Well, the the creek was out of its banks into the road in front of Eugene's house. What? I ain't never seen it that big. Well, we couldn't, the the, um, the bus couldn't make it. We was on a, it was a little white van. They called it the little, I'll get into this story in a minute. This is a different story. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, the bus couldn't make it there, so we had to get off, and we walked to Ida Charlie's when they lived up there in that old house where Stanley and Arthena lived. lived. It was an old house that was there, and it's, so we stayed there, and we could holler at Mom and Dad across the creek, because it was just across the creek. Well, Beth Lou had to move, leave her house because it was getting up into her house, and she was staying on the porch with us. And got in the house? And Beth said, yeah. I ain't never seen Well, see, Dad had here. to actually come around back, the back road and come through town, and come up there to Eugene's barn right there for, and then pick us up and take us back around town for us to get across the creek. Well, anyway, Bedley was standing up on a porch and they had an outhouse. 
and we sat down and we watched we watched the wooden bridge go down the creek. Watch it wash out. And the next thing she knows, she goes, Oh no, there goes oh no, there goes my outhouse. <laughs> Her outhouse got washed down the creek. <laughs> oh poor Bedaloo. And you know you know Bedaloo. You remember Bedaloo? Do you yeah. remember Bedaloo? Yeah, I love Bedaloo. She was vocal anyway. I'm a cold cold. So Seals Math, that's a little tiny school, all right? It had two big yellow buses, but that was for the kids who lived up in town. But most of the kids lived back in the boonies, which is pretty much 90% of Sneeble. So, all right, the bus that we had wasn't a bus at all. It was a long walk. Kidnapper van? <laughs> yes. It's a kidnapper van. And you had to stand up and hold on to the top because there was only a few seats. There was like... Four double seats on one side. Uh, see, we didn't have double seats when I rode it. Didn't we had double seats in it? And I remember. Okay, so we had double seats, but there was only four double seats. And let me tell you, most of the kids rode this tiny white bus. Okay, there was probably thirty of us on that tiny little thing. And it was a kidnapper van, all right. And one side of it didn't have any seats, but you had to hold on like you're holding on a public transit bus, like Disney World buses. Mm -hmm. You had to hold on. Most time you fail. Wow, you all upgraded. Guess so, but you know what happened when I got in first grade? He got a brand new bus. And it was like a church bus. It had like big long seats in the back that could fit four people. And it probably had six rows of seats. Well, when I was at Seal Mathis, there was three buses. They were called Little White Bus the valley bus, and the river bus. Somebody would stand and watch, and they'd go, valley bus, little white bus, and everybody knew to go line up. But anyway, we had a bench that went down this side, a bench that went across the back, and a bench that went up this way, and they were about this wide. Good grief. That's how we rode that bus. My bus driver, his name was James, and he called me Creek because my name's Brooke, and he called me Creek. Yeah. And I'm friends with him on Facebook. Remember this one time, Jessica, if you're watching this video, I, I have a memory for you, okay? We was riding the bus, all right? And it was before we got the upgrade to the bus. And me and you were sitting in a seat. We got to share the seat. And every, they never, I don't think they ever cleaned the bus floors. It's full of dirt, full of everything. And you found a candy wrapper in the floor of the bus. And I dared you to look it, oh. and you did. Well, let, me, <laughs> let me ask you this, talking about Seal Mathis. Did they put coal on the floors? I don't think so. I don't remember, though. What? I know we had coal. No, we had gas. They put the gas well, in the back. Well, once or twice a year, it's usually in the spring, you know, they had those wooden floors. How did you not set on fire? I have no idea. But what they would do is they would put coal on the floor to keep dust down. It was to keep the dust down because it was so dusty and it was so old that they would put coal on, on the floor to keep the dust down. And how it, and you know, we had- How it didn't combust? We had coal stoves. How it didn't, but it was awesome. It was fun. Everybody knew everybody. Which everybody could be bad. Yeah, it, it, it does have its downs. But I was friends with the older kids. I was friends with the younger kids. Everybody was helpful to each other. It wasn't bad. It was fun. And, and we got to bring toys to school. I had a big old backpack full of Barbie dolls and I brought it to school. We had cloak rooms. This is how we school didn't school. have the cloak room she's talking about was a copy room. It was a cloak yeah. room, but we kept, they kept supplies in it. And we built playhouses in there. In our classrooms, we would have a playhouse and the boys would come in there and try to destroy Ooh, it. Ooh, I'm thinking about. First grade, Miss Janie. You know what? She was the best. She was probably one of my favorite teachers of all time. I went to school with her. Miss Janie. Yes. So, Miss Janie, when I was in kindergarten, kindergarten was in the same room as first grade. We were just separated by lo little cubbies, right? And we, wasn't. we were separated by little cubbies. So, kindergarten, I had Miss Pat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say bad things about people. She was my least favorite teacher of all time because she was a little 
She's a little mean. She yelled at people a lot. You know the kind of teacher I'm talking about. But, and when we found out that Miss Pat was leaving and going to the big school in the middle of town, we were so excited. We were so daggone happy about that. And our, thank God it happened too because we got Miss Janie the next year. She taught kindergarten and first grade. And she was my first grade teacher. And oh my gosh, she was the most sweetest. I loved her to death and I, I still love her to death. She was just so awesome. You know, like one of those teachers that have like a big impact on your life? Miss Janie was one of those mm -hmm. for me. And I remember she brought in new stuff. Like new toys and things for playtime. And she brought in like a whole playhouse. And like the playhouse, she had like a play bed, play kitchen, everything. And it was the best time of my life. You know what happened at Seal Mathis when I was there? The health the, the health department had, I think it was the health department. I think it was them. They had a camper. And it had, it had a door and a door. But it was, I didn't want the camper. It was more like a motor home. It had a door. Did they give up presents? No. Oh. The you could go through there and be treated. They would give you a checkup. You would walk in the front. They would check, give you a checkup. They'd weigh you, take your temperature. It didn't happen a lot. And then if they thought, I don't, cool. I don't know how this happened because that's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that could happen there that could be libels. Yes, it's just so different back then. Because, you know. Not everybody wanted and sued people over everything back then. They also had a bread truck that would come to the to the cookhouse and you could go, if you had a quarter, you could go buy sweet rolls or honey buns or Ooh, off of this. I got a story about, okay, they had a Pepsi machine in the foyer. They had a Pepsi machine in the foyer and it cost a quarter to get a Pepsi. And it was a Pepsi machine, all right? But they told us one day the Pepsi machine's going, and we were all just so sad because that was like the good thing that we had. Mama and Papa would always give me a quarter. But they surprised us with a Coke machine. We got a Coke machine, and it had Dr. Pepper, Mellow Yellow. And I remember when the Coke machine got installed. I got mm -hmm. out of the court. I got out of the car to run up the steps, and everybody was lying down the steps, waiting in line <laughs> to get a Coke. Would you like, hurry up? I was so excited, and they had knee high peach in it too. Wow! And I love good old knee high peach. I can only get it in Snevel though; it only tastes good in Snevel. June's has it. I got one. Is in the intro to this video. <laughs> June's has. It. Oh, this is a little store that is down below where my mom and dad lives, and it is referred to as the candy store. I didn't call it the candy store. The younger Kate and the grandkids called call it that. I thought the jeans. Yeah. <coughs> used to be Moses. What? Randy Moses' dad owned that store. I only know June. They, well, there was somebody between Moles and June. Two, maybe two people. June was a little old man who wore, who wore a, what are they called? Trucker hat. Mm -hmm. He wore it on top of his head and he had a button up shirt and he would sit on the corner like this. His daughter's one of my good friends. Missy? Mm -hmm. She She's sweet as she can be. She run it now. She owns it. When he passed away, she and her did. Mm -hmm. I still love to go in there. But it used to be a lot cheaper, you know, inflation and everything like that. Oh, I remember going in there. Dad would, very rarely, but he would give us like 35 cents. And we'd go in and get a Coke and a candy bar for 35 cents. Papa and Mama would give me a dollar. And I would go in with my dollar and I would get... Um, one of those smarty dry suckers that don't get sticky. And it was like 15 cents. And I, when I was little, when I was this age, or when I was younger, and I would hear them talk about the things that they could get for 35 cents. I was like, oh my gosh, they're old. But I can do that now. I'm not kidding, y'all. Papa would give me a dollar. I'd get me one of those smarty suckers for like 15 cents. I would get a Snicker candy bar for 50 cents. Then I'd go outside and get me a knee high page for a quarter. It's always cheaper at the machine. Always cheaper. And cold Isn't too. that, can't you still get those uh, Smarty Suckers at June's? Yeah, they still have them, but they're not 15 Oh, anymore. and Slapsticks. They don't have Slapsticks anymore. <sighs> I looked the other day. Slapsticks are the best candy on the planet. Steven goes in there and gets those candy cigarettes. Does he? Yeah. Ask Colin. Dusty doesn't like for the boys to get those because he says smokers just yeah. don't like it. But I was like, Colin, you want some candy cigarettes? He said, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I guess because he's 
that his age is like, well, I got him a bunch for stocking stuffer ones. I got him a whole box of ones for stocking stuffer stuff. I, I remember that. Man, I need some slapsticks in my life. Yeah. I wonder who sells them now. Sis used to get those cinnamon sticks. They were suckers. square yeah, suckers. Yeah, the square ones. Yeah. That's the one she threw across the room in, at uh, Still Mathis. And the guy was asleep on his desk and raised up that time and she hit him in the head with a sucker. <laughs> Did she get in trouble? She may have. Mom! I don't remember. I was, see, I was never in the same class as sis. My mother. She used to have... Uh, have a crush on a guy and she'd get dad's change and go buy stuff so she could buy him stuff for school like candy and stuff. I hear about this story all the time. Vicky's just daggone better about this quarter madness, okay? <laughs> yeah, I was talking about she it would, Sunday at Memo. She would get all of his change. Mama go raid Papa's pockets. She'd ask him. He'd be asleep though. And he'd be like, yeah. And mom would take all of his change. And she left no change for her, my Aunt Nita, my Aunt Kim. Well, Kim, Kim was too little. Kim's nine Kim years older than me. Kim was very tiny. But was it Uncle Tim too? She didn't leave no change for the other one. And you know how Dad was. Dad likes to rattle his change. If he can't rattle his change, he used to keep his pockets full of wa uh, washers. I have diagnosed Papa with ADHD, and I feel like that's where I get my ADHD from. You ever heard, see him uh, empty his pockets? Yeah. He'd have thing. washers in them sometimes, so we could rattle them. Yeah. Colin, every time he goes and sees Papa, usually almost every time, he says, can I have some money? <laughs> and Papa <laughs> gives him change. Because <laughs> Papa always has change in his pocket. You know what the best time ever was? What? When Papa worked, he was a welder before he retired, and he would come home with his big boots, and he would have little brown pebbles, tiny brown pebbles, in the bottom of his shoes, where the metal would, like, drip on the ground, he'd walk on it, and we would get a stick pin and pop all of those little welding pieces out of his boots. It was so I fun. remember it was little bitty shards, like hair or something and we'd get tweezers and pull them out. The, it did those too. There was a lot of the balls though like little tiny tiny balls and you could pop them. Sometimes you could push it like a pimple and then pop out. You know what he told me? He told us once my dad used to work in what they call the zinc mines uh, um, and he worked underground. So you would have to, there was the mines and then there was the main road and over past the road was the entrance and they would have to go over there and go underneath the road to go down to the shaft and he said you could go underneath the you could hear the cars going across that freaked me out a little bit he'd come home with these geo amethyst looking crystal like things they'd be purple ones blue ones <gasps> he didn't keep ones. them no <gasps> we'd have them at the barn and i i don't know whatever happened to them that's cool. But then he got to be a diesel mechanic, and he went above ground. He stayed above, and then he was a union steward. He used to sing. <gasps> you didn't know Dad used to sing in church? Sitting at the feet of Jesus. You have got to have him sing, sitting at the feet of Jesus. I think Papa changed. For when oh, he, he could kids sing. Great kids. But see, I've not heard him in a long time. And, and you know how, I don't know if anybody knows how a Southern preacher is, Southern Baptist preacher is, but they get in a... No, I don't want to say about hacking. Yeah, they 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 get really into it and they, they get out of breath. Yes, and they preach so hard. I'm wondering if maybe it didn't do something to his and he don't sing as much. I don't want to mimic it because I feel like that's a little bit disrespectful. It's they they get okay. They're talking. They're talking real fast. They're hard. preaching hard and they're talking about the Lord and they're excited. And in between, like a sentence. They breathe in real and deep, and they kind of hitch a little bit. Yeah, and it's like they're breathing, <gasps> but if it's loud. Been for their breath. <clears throat> oh, I want to hear Pop Paul preach. I've not heard him in a long time. I love. I might go there for Easter Sunday. We lived in the old house, and Mom and Dad had a tobacco patch where Mom and Dad's house is now, and they were they were setting tobacco. To, on to, the hill? Well, right behind Mom and Dad's house. Oh, the flat. There was a tobacco patch through there. And Tim and Sis was on the tobacco setter. Sis is my mother. Yes. The, I, I call That's her. That's not her name. Her name's not Sis. It, it, it was hard for my brother to say Dolores. So, we call her Sis. Uncle so, Tim couldn't say it. 
well, he was just ten, he was just seventeen months old when she was born. There's not even two years difference. Oh, I'm thinking about Uncle Tim as a baby holding his little baby sister. They were sitting tobacco, and they was the tobacco patch, and then they was uh, weeds and stuff, a little bank and weeds. And Dad was, you know, what, when you're sitting tobacco and you're driving the tractor, you have to look behind to make sure you know you're keeping things straight. Well, he just happened to glance to the side and you could hear this. We was down at the house and you could hear this rattle, 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 rattle. <gasps> was it a rattlesnake? It was a timber rattlesnake and he was striking at the back tire. The back tire was between dad and Tim and Tim was right behind the back tire sitting tobacco. And that snake was just a buzzing as hard as it could buzz. And he was just, so Tim jumps up on the seat and says, catch it alive, dad, catch it alive. Did he? No. Oh. Oh, let me tell you something about my family. All right. I'm not guilty of it. I am. They're weird, okay? I'm not weird. No, it's weird. That's weird. Vicky, you know what she would have did? She would have went, she had tongs, snake tongs. She would have went on there and picked up a snake. Because every one of my family members are Looney Tunes and love snakes. They like to go snake hunting. They like to look at good old copperheads of poison things. And they like to look for rattlesnakes. And we get offended if people kill snakes. I'm kidding. You only kill a snake <laughs> if it's put you in, put you in danger. Okay. It's philosophy. Snakes serve a purpose. Oh yeah. Okay. But okay. With that rattles. I don't like snakes. They freak me out. We wouldn't have. Ooh. We wouldn't have some of the blood pressure medicines that we have without snakes. Thank the Lord for the people that. We wouldn't have yeah. syringes either, because that's where they developed the syringes from the fangs of a venomous snake. I've seen that on Outlander. She did that. Because um, Jamie got bit by a rattlesnake and he was going to die. And she couldn't find a way to inject him with antibiotics. And she's like, oh my God, the thing. And she did it. Where did she get the thing? From the snake. That Wait, him. where? They cut its head off. Where's this at? It. It's in a movie. It's an Outlander. Where's Outlander based out of? Um, this part is when they moved to North Carolina. Oh, because I was like, is this in Ireland or somewhere? Scotland is do where Do they it's... have venomous snakes? I don't know if they do. Ain't that the St. Patrick's Day in Ireland? Isn't that... He led the snakes out of Ireland. Apparently we got them all because my family likes to go But then he lead them out... Were, were they venomous? I don't know. How does it go? Dusty! Oh, and snakes are not poisonous. They're venomous. Yes. Okay, listen here. There's this that I've been seeing this all over TikTok, and it's really bugging the pee out of me. People are saying if you're ever in the Smoky Mountains and it's dark outside and you hear something holler like this and it like plays a clip of something holler, you better run because that's the feral people. The feral people of the Smoky Mountains. That ain't a thing. Don't believe none of those people are not real. You know what I wonder, though? I wonder if, and I, this is what I wonder. People used to say that a lot. Uh, if you hear this, I think a lot of times it was people. But the, mountain but lines. Not necessarily mountain lines. There's a lot of moonshine made in Tennessee. People don't want you close to the moonshine still. That's true as well. But there is no feral people. They would have been seen. I've lived here my entire life, and I have never heard these stories until I started seeing people post it on TikTok about the feral people living in the Smoky Mountains. They even have a name for them. Like, excuse me, sir, I've lived here my whole life. That ain't real. If somebody has told somebody a story like that, it was just as a joke. There's no feral people here. I, well, I mean... Ferals and living in the woods. Yeah, there's some people who act... Act feral, but they're not people that are like, uh, what was that thing that on uh, Rugrats? No, the wild thornberries. That little was he the one? Was they little? Was there Johnny? One? Yeah, was he? Feral? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. We don't have yeah. people like that around here. We don't have any feral people, so you don't have to be scared. We have feral cats, feral dogs, and if you hear a baby crying in the woods run away. It's not feral people. Hey, no, but it's we did have witches. Ooh. Oh, this is a whole other topic. I threw trash. 
You know, there's one lived up by my mom and papa, where my mom and papa live. Yeah, and the the one papa used to tell me about that would stick a Robert. needle. She stuck the needle in the baby's soft spot. Right, papa who? Papa Walton. Oh, that was a different place. That was up Chestnut Ridge. Where's that? Oh, we're at Hobble Gobble. Venom is injected. Poison is ingested. Poison, I call them poisonous snakes. They're venomous. I still say poisonous. And what we, I swear. So in this, in this town, the town we grew up in, it's okay. It's not frowned upon. It's a different part of the planet, okay? Um, it's okay if you get in the back truck bed of a truck. <laughs> and you just sit in it and you go riding down the road, okay? You didn't have to sit. <laughs> We That's stood a true. lot of times. I don't think I did. Held on to the top, the top of the cab, and we just like this going down the road. Now, when we do hay rides and stuff like that, I let the boys get in truck beds when we do it because we're because we're going real slow. We got the emergency lights on. We're doing a hay ride now. I don't think the boys have ever just got in a truck bed and rode. Really there used so. to be seven of us that would ride in the cab of a, a, a pickup truck. How is that easy? Dad would drive. Mom. Would hold Kim. Sis would hold Anita, and Tim would hold me. Oh, we'd sit in their laps. But wait a minute, how was there that many people in a row? We were locked. We were back in. <laughs> See why we ran, rode in the truck bed? I mean, one time, you know, you sit on the uh, wheel well inside the truck bed. You yeah. know, that's where the wheel goes. You know, I just, I just learned like ten years ago that that wasn't an actual seat. <laughs> You didn't know it was tires. I was sitting there, we was going through the back valley, and I was leaning over watching the tires. Did you fall out? No. Did you fall out? I did. You fell out of a truck one time. No, I was a car. I was a baby. <laughs> well, I, I was just looking like this. I've been over looking like this, and next thing I know, there was a big old briar across the road, and it went <laughs> right across my neck. You about died. I was like, what in the apple of briars out of my neck forever? No, I fell out of the truck. I fell out of a car in a mud hole. I thought you fell out of a truck. I think it was a car. I don't I wasn't there. I just always heard the story. I was little. I don't remember. So we didn't have to have car seats back then. You didn't, did you? No, no, no seat belts. So, um, during the summertime, when we go over mammals on Sunday or whenever, it's usually Sunday, people just plop in a truck bed and we go driving up the mountain. Hunting snakes. And they hunt snakes. But we only have timber rattlers. We don't have... They're copperheads. Well, I mean, they're rattlesnakes. We don't have any diamondbacks or anything. We only have timber rattlers. And ours is usually... Well, there's a black face and yellow faces. My mom is a crazy person. She lives... She wants to be one of those people that, like... She wants to do venom. necropsies. Is dead, it necropsies? Is it dead snakes? On um, animals? Is that autopsies on animals? I don't know. Only on snakes? But she does. She needs to work in Florida with all those pythons. I, which I, None venomous snakes don't appeal to me. Cobras what? don't appeal to me. Why well, not a cobra? Are they poor? It's not. Yes, they're, Sorry, no, venomous. They're venomous. Venomous. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's usually the ones in the United States. I'm not gaboon vipers. This is a weird topic. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, my family's weird. Y'all might like snakes too. I don't. They creep me out. They're slithery little things. They're nasty. You want a black snake in your barn. <gasps> I'm sorry. Keeps mice away. It's as bad as mice. I had a dream last night that a raccoon got loose in my house. It was so scary. <laughs> it was so bad. And I dreamed that I opened a cabinet and it jumped out at me. And I woke up going, Whoa. What if you didn't be dusty? It was scary. That that school, this story always scared the daylights out of me growing up to the point that I wouldn't even want to go to Grandpa's house because it scared me so but bad. But what's, what's so odd about this story is different people from different places and generations told this story, and it was all the same, and they didn't know each other to tell the same to get information from each other. It started the first story. And the timeline that I've heard was Papa and his friend. Papa, papa and Jake. They were, he was seeing on a date, see mom. Yes. My Papa was on a date and he went to go see my mamma. Right? And he took his friend with him in the car and his friend's like, you go 
walked y'all into her house or something, right? I don't think the car could have made it all the way or something. Yeah. Um, and he said, I'll just sit here in the car. And Papa walked Mama down to her house. And Papa came back and his friend was in the floorboard and all the doors were locked. And he was like terrified. Quiet as a ghost. And Papa was like, what are you doing? And he was like, there was this old man. You finish the story. Oh. Well, he was, they called him a little old man. And he was dressed in a scissor tail black coat. The old timey scissor tail coats. He was a little guy. Did he wear a hat? I think Can't he wore be, a hat. I think he had a hat. I always heard about well, his hat. He was trying to get in the car with with Jake, and he was petrified. And he swears that that's what happened. Well, Papa, what, your mom saw him. My mom saw him. And uh, it wasn't just mom. It, Teresa? Jane, Amy? Yeah, probably Teresa or Regina. Well, James Edward, the one that drove the bus, saw him. When he was driving the bus once. What happened when my mom, when she seen him, they was walking down the hall to Grandpa Fate's house. And there was this big bank up the, beside of him. And all of her and a few of her cousins were walking down there. And this old man jumped down from the bank in front of him and started chasing him. And Neil, you remember the story about Neil? What happened? I remember he saw what happened. Okay, so above my Grandpa Fate's house. My Aunt Lena lived, and she had three sons, Neil, Brian, and Nathan. So, was it Neil went walking down the holler. I think he was going to Grandpa's house, or maybe he was just exploring like boys do, something like that. And it was getting real dark, and it was past time to come home, and Neil hadn't come home yet. So, my Aunt Lena sent Brian to go see what was taking him so long. So, he walked down there, and he went to the old house. Uh, not the one Pat Grandpa lived in before he died. The one down below it. The old house. And Neil was up in a tree. The old little old man chased Neil up in a tree. And Neil couldn't get down because he was scared to death. But then he finally came down when Brian came after him. Um, I don't know that he ever was seen outside of that holler though. I don't know either. And the time span between each of these sightings is completely different generations like the my 40s mom, or no not the my 40s, mom the and dad was probably dating in the late 50s late early 50s 60s. and then when my mom seen him it was the 70s late 70s neil would have been in the 80s late 80s early, early 90s. 90s and this man looked the same from the 50s to the 70s to the 90s now i never seen the little old man. i never did see him either but partly because I didn't see him because I would cry and I didn't want to go down there because he scared the crap But you me. know, when when we were, the way that you got to my grandparents' house, they lived in the middle of a holler. You either had to walk up a holler or down the holler. They lived in the middle because you couldn't get a car through there half the time. And dad would go to work. And he, well, he would drop mom off where he would go to work. And we would get off the school bus down there at the end of the road, down there where Ida and Charlie lives. And we would walk up that holler. And mom would have us a snack laying, you know, in the creek, have it tied up and it'd be cold. And so we'd get going up to there. <gasps> oh! Well, well, we would walk out of that holler at 11 o'clock at night. With not even a flashlight part of the time. To meet dad down at the bus down the road to get a ride home. I ain't no flipping way. I never did see him. That guy, that old guy. Who was? Was it Rose? That was with mom? Rose it and Regina? Been, I don't can't remember, but. And it was more people than just one person. Yeah, it, it wasn't people be by themselves a lot of times. It'd be by other people. I remember when the bus driver James, when he said that he had seen it. He was going down past a holler. And did he see him like running through a field? That place is haunted. Ooh. We need to do a whole episode of just scary Just stories. haunted Hancock. Yeah. Okay, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Country as Cornbread. It's just where we uh, sit around and we talk about random stuff in the South. It's fun. I'm and choking. And don't forget Olivia. If you want to donate to Olivia and her mom, Casey, they call her Livy, and Livy is fighting leukemia. She got diagnosed not even a week ago. 
So the if, most aggressive form, she said once. Yes. Apparently is the most aggressive form of leukemia. So if you would like to donate to Olivia and her mom, I will leave an address down below where you can mail the donation. Just put deposit in Casey Williams' account. And, and they will put it in there. Send positive thoughts, vibes, and prayers. Yes, please. Don't forget, if you cannot donate, um, you can also help in other ways. By liking this video, by sharing this video, by commenting, all of that helps increase the video's reach because all of the revenue made on this video in the month of March is going to go to Olivia and her mom, Casey. Thank you, guys. I love you so much.